Hey guys, Chris here. Today I'm testing out some new gear that I got and I think this gear is going to make a difference in my backpacking. Could help you as well. We're going to take a look at it in the studio. That's next. Okay, I love gear, you guys love gear, so we're gonna take a look at some gear. I got five things to take a look at. These things I bought to kind of make a little difference with my backpacking. Obviously I got gear to cover all my bases, but sometimes you get gear that you wanna just kind of give you a little extra, give you a little more comfort, a little more security, a little more something to look forward to. You're hiking down the trail and you got a brand new sleeping bag that's a 10 degree bag, whereas before you had a 30 degree bag, and so now you're not gonna freeze at night, or you got a new tent with extra pockets and a big vestibule on it, and you're really looking forward to this new tent because it's just like something to really make your camping experience better. One of those things I got, and you guys have been asking me, hey, base camp, you gotta check this out, and that is the Helinox Chair Zero. Yeah, and I love my chairs. This is actually my third chair. So I got, I got chairs. I like chairs. I'm becoming the chair guy, I think. And I don't know where the zero is. I don't think there's any zero going on here. I think it's a marketing thing. Uh, it's not zero in price. It's not zero in weight. Uh, but it is comfortable. And this comes in at 265 pound capacity, weighs one pound, so that's the, the, the zero is basically one or very lightweight. That compares very well to the REI Co-op Flexlite Air Chair, which is one pound. So what's the difference? I think this one, it's designed more stable, whereas the, here's the difference. The REI Flexlite Air Chair sits essentially like this with the vertical frame to the front here, whereas the Chair Zero is like this with the horizontal frame going that way. And that gives you more stability side to side. And that's when you, you rock side to side. And I've had that Flexlite Air Chair be kind of unstable when I'm in them like Santa swaying back and forth. So I just think this is just a better overall chair. Um, so I really like that aluminum frame on it, very lightweight. Comes in black, gray, and sand. I got the gray one, $119. The Flexlite Air Chair is a hundred bucks. So you're paying 120 bucks. It's, it's a premium chair. It is, I think, the best chair that you're gonna get. Uh, the Trekology Yizzy Go is a two pound chair, 2.1 pounds, and that has, is very stable. This is actually the frame for it, and it's a very stable, it's just heavier. That comes in at 40 bucks for that, which is a great price for a chair. You just, it's, it's, it's always quality, weight, and price that you're wrestling around with. So. So this one is good. The Trekology chair is your cheaper alternative, but it's more heavy. So let's take a look at this real quick here. Really good construction on this with the corners here. Look how they're just this heavy duty corner here to pull the chair up. You've got to make sure that it says this side up right here. That is that goes over the back of the chair. And some people have said when they sit in this chair, the Helinox Chair Zero, it's a little tight and pinches on their hips. And I've also read some other people say in some comments say that over time this, it spreads out and it's more comfortable. So I think if, you, if you're really interested in this chair, I would stick with it and then it'll, it'll kind of break it in. So very good chair though. Uh, and also you can get a, uh, it's called a ground sheet that goes underneath the feet and it's just this sheet that attaches to each leg and that will keep you from going through the snow, sand, soft ground or even muddy ground because these feet <laughs> will go right in and you'll tip over with your food and your coffee in your lap and uh, you'll go down with it. So that's something that would help. What I would do is I would design a like a square or a rectangle 
and put a little leg hole in it, a little leg extension, and then you slip that on like that, kind of like a trekking pole with the snow baskets, the mud baskets, or the different tips that you can apply. For different surfaces require different ways to go. So that's something you can do. But anyways, the Helinox Chair Zero really compares well to the other chairs that I have, the Yizzy Go and the REI Flex Light Air Chair. They're all really good chairs, but the uh, you're paying more and you're getting like a little bit more, like I said. So anyways, worth checking out, Chair Zero. Okay, so the next thing I got is a new knife. I'm always looking for a new knife. I currently have a Swiss Army knife. It's a smaller one. This is a great little pocket knife. It's got the scissors, the knife, tweezers, etc. Works great. I've had hunting knives in the past. This is a Winchester hunting knife. Uh, it's, it's a little heavy. It's a little thick and heavy, a too, little too much. And so I got something in between. I got the Gerber paraframe. Check that out. This is a three inch blade and folds out to about seven inches folded out. Stainless steel comes in at 2.6 ounces. It does have a clip on this side. I like having that, but I don't know if I trust it. I'm the kind of guy that a half hour later, I'll have it on my belt and I'll go, what happened to my knife? It's gone. And it's, you know, when you're hiking, you drop something, it's pretty much gone. So uh, I like that. It does have some thumb screws on it here to help you lock it out. It is a lock blade. I like that. Uh, the serrated blade on it right there, that is a really good thing to have. Uh, there it is. The serrated blade on it is really nice to have. You can cut paracord with it. You can cut uh, you know, small branches if you need to, if you need that. Really sharp blade right out of the box. Um, it is, a, like I said, a lock blade. Uh, fits really well in my hand. Uh, it's the kind of thing I'll probably end up putting in my hip belt pocket or in the upper part of my backpack. And uh, just a good thing to have for the kitchen and overall backpacking. So this comes in at $22.95, so that's going to be a nice little upgrade for me compared to my other knife, because that's not a knife. Now that's a knife. <laughs> Don't take that backpack. It's a little too much. Too small. Just right. The paraframe. Check it out. Okay, so if you guys have watched my videos for any length of time, I do hike year round. I hike in the snow, I snowshoe, and I'm the number one thing you need when you winter hike, you got to figure out your footwear. And you can't just wear your hiking shoes, uh, big clunky sorrel boots like this, they're just a little too much, too big and heavy. Uh, so I like something in between these two, and I found the Nortiv 8 men's insulated waterproof winter hiking snow boots. Very comfortable, very warm and dry. Uh, it does have a 3M Thinsulite, Thinsulate rated minus 25 on that. That's pretty cool. Layered insulation, and it is waterproof. I actually took them out and hiked in a creek in them. Uh, and I stayed dry and uh, took them out in the snow, checked them out, see how they did. Does have a Vibram type sole on the bottom there. Um, removable insoles right here. It's got a pretty nice sole insole right there. Uh, obviously, you can add your own, get something bigger, or just add on top of it to make it uh, work for you. But lightweight, warm and dry. Uh, this really helped me for my snowshoeing, my winter stuff. It's going to be really nice to have something that's kind of dedicated for that. And this is a very much a budget boot uh, compared to something like a Cabela's Men's Winter Insulated Hike Boot, which is about $100 plus on up. This comes in at $46.99 for the Nortivate Men's Winter Waterproof Insulated <laughs> Snow Boot. And uh, that'll make a difference for me 
when I do my winter stuff and that'll get me out of my big clunkers here <laughs> and into something a little more comfortable. Okay, so when we're backpacking, we all need a way to start fire. I use stormproof matches. Those work really good. Uh, a big lighter works good, but sometimes the matches get wet. The fluid runs out on the big lighter. What do you do? It's good to have an alternative. I've looked, I found on Amazon, I got a magnesium alloy ferro rod. Check that out. Wooden handle. It's a rod here that's got a magnesium alloy you scrape it and it throws out a shower of sparks of molten sparks onto your tinder whether that's leaves or paper i use dryer lint for my tinder for my fire starter that works really good for me it's, it works amazingly this works really well this particular one will throw out 12 to 15 thousand strikes with it which is a lot. So, and it, this also has a paracord built into it here on the holder here. In case of emergency, you can unravel this. Now you got some paracord to work with. Has a wooden handle, five inches long. <clears throat> has a ruler on the actual scraper here and a bottle opener and some kind of other opener here. But really good thing to have in case of an emergency. I've you just do it two or three times you get really comfortable with it it's really a lot of fun to make your own fire with something like a ferro rod there's a bunch of different ones on amazon read the reviews this is the one i got it's the rkr outdoors ferro rod comes in at ten dollars and ninety cents i throw this in my backpack and my cook kit is just a nice backup and kind of fun to play with when i'm making a campfire in the backcountry Okay, so I'm always keeping my eyes out in the gear world, the backpacking world for things that uh, are interesting. And I wanted to check this out and I thought you guys might be interested in checking this out. I found the Teton Sports Hiker 3700. That is 3700 cubic inches or 60 liters. That is a really well built, well designed, lightweight light enough weight full backpack this is four pounds on this guy and this thing has a lot of great features really nice uh, material on it. it's not the real heavy thick stuff it's a lighter type material but really strong obviously um, it's just got all the features of a pack like an osprey that i would look for really good top lid here a uh, zipper top dual zippers on the top here uh, big pocket at the top underneath the top lid there's a there's a separate pocket down here under here as well for keys or wallet kind of things you could hide for emergencies or whatever um, I, I like those little secret compartments good good opening to it here with the cincher like that you can cinch it down cinch it down from the outside like that does have a hydration sleeve inside right here in the main compartment I like that on the outside here on the front really good outside pockets I love my external cargo pockets on the outside front of the backpack here they're not super big but they are pretty long and it goes way down here and there's one on each side here very cool i like that the separated sleeping bay compartment right here with a floor here to separate it does have a zipper on it. you could drop the floor if you wanted to open the whole thing up i like having a separate zipper sleeping bay compartment uh, it does have you guys are going to like this it does have a rain cover built into the bottom here it's got a velcro opening right there that works really good to have that just built in and it's just like padding on the bottom built in there as well for your gear also has sleeping pad straps on the outside here on the bottom and you could also put a tent here if you really wanted to nice big uh the clips are really well built here 
also has a ice axe holder right here on each side. I put a snow shovel in that and really good to have something like that. In the summer I'll put my tripod there when I'm taking pictures and things. On the side here we have side compression straps and you can put your tent right in the water pot, water pot, water pocket, water bottle pocket. <laughs> I can't say that. Though so you can put your water bottle pocket here. You can put your water bottle here in this pocket or a tent straight down in here. Got one in each side, compression straps on each side. On the back of the pack here, I always get that confused. This is the, I, always, I think this is the front and this is the back because it's on my back and it's outside of my back. So, but anyways, <clears throat> really well designed. You can see it has a good lumbar support at the bottom here. Check that out. Good lumbar support right there. Really good belt, uh, padded. Uh, I could see this belt being a little bit longer, extended, maybe three, three and a half inches. So that really wraps around your waist because most of your weight is going to be on your hips. But uh, it's still very comfortable. It does have a pocket right here. You could put small items there. It will not take a cell phone. Uh, it does have some adjustable aluminum bars here that are built into the back of the pack here into the suspension of the pack here and they can be bent to form to your back like that. Uh, good shoulder strap on them, lift loaders, lots of really great features, a sternum strap right there. These are the kind of features that you would find on an Osprey backpack. So they're obviously studying what works and what doesn't and trying to implement that into a backpack that is very affordable. This is a hundred bucks for this, $99, $0.99, Amazon. Uh, I've seen them as low as 80 bucks. So this is a really, an excellent starting backpack for people starting out or people that just want to save some money. But I'm really impressed with the Teton Sports Hiker 37. It's comparable to the Scout 3400, but that's a smaller, I think that's a 34 is a 50. This is 60, and I just like the material better. I like the design of this as well, but uh, they're both good packs. But something to check out when you uh, are looking for a new backpack and you want to save some money. So look at that. Look at that. Nice and lightweight like that. So, <clears throat> so anyways, check out Hiker 3700. All right, always remember all this gear is really meant to get us out here. That's what it's all about. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. And as always, keep hiking.